Welcome back to my channel, guys. I wanted to talk about um, something that's been on my mind lately because I remember it was mentioned um, sometime around 2018 or 2017. Um, and that was the live action movie that was supposed to have been uh, in production. Now, of course, since the uh, COOF has, you know, taken over the world and everyone's lives, um, it probably has put somewhat of a damper on that situation where they might not have be in the situ uh, in a in a, a good position to make it. Um, they might not have the you know everything down. The last little bit of information we we uh, heard about it, or the last information that I heard about it, anyways, was that they had gotten a writer. Granted, not a writer I was really uh, happy with. And that was it. That was the last bit of information that uh, we heard. So I don't know if it's been canceled or if it's just not going to happen um, with that writer and they're looking for someone else. I don't know what's going on. Uh, they haven't said anything. So who knows? But this video primarily is going to be about what I would uh, think, personally, would be some of the best shows to turn into a live-action movie. Starting off, I want to make it clear that I don't hate the Universal Century or anything like that. I'm a huge fan of the Universal Century. I love it. It's my favorite, favorite type of show and my favorite timeline. Unfortunately, I don't feel like the Universal Century would be the best place to try and do a live action movie, especially a Western style movie for a new audience, primarily random moviegoers who know nothing about Gundam. And of course, a lot of people would probably be would be asking, you know, why is that? You know, how come you don't think that would be a good place to start? It's got the most content, and I think that that right there is actually the mo the biggest detriment to the Universal Century. As much as I would love to see a live action, you know, RX or Zeta Gundam being portrayed on screen, which would be really cool. At the end of the day. Those are all connected, and the only way to do a live-action movie would be to either A, write it in a way where it can be self-contained, but also has the potential for a sequel. That way, in case it actually does surprisingly well, you can make the sequel relatively easily. But at the same time, if it does poorly, you still have a chance of, uh, you know salvaging you know salvaging that one movie because there's no continuation so at the end of the day the universal century would be really cool for all the hardcore gundam fans but it would be terrible place it would be a terrible place to start for your average moviegoer your regular moviegoer they want to go into a movie get sucked into the world and the universe and have a good time but what they don't usually want, especially nowadays, is to feel like they're missing stuff. Unfortunately, this same trick was used in Star Wars way back in the day when it first came out. And that seemed to work for them. A universe that you knew you were missing out on the parts of the story that we're at the beginning of what you're of where you're, you're where you're at. You feel like you're in the middle of the story, which you kind of are. But it was done that way on purpose because it was supposed to be like an homage to old school serials, which were basically the beginnings of what became TV series. But the problem with that is is that it doesn't really work in a modern day set, a setting because most of us who are you know, younger than 80. <laughs> um, most of us don't really rem don't know anything about serials. Most of us have never seen them. 
You know, we're not used to that type of uh, experience. We're used to TV shows, and the TV show experience is a little bit different because in a TV show, you you know that you're going to be able to see the next episode because you know when it comes on. But with a serial, you had to go to the movie theater every single week to buy a ticket and then watch the serials. Now, the thing is, is that most people never went unless they were going to go see a movie, even back then. So even if you really liked the serial, you was always missing out on what the next story actually was because you were not going to go to the movie theater every single week to ki to keep up with the Lone Ranger. You know, you just wasn't going to do that. Yeah, you could technically keep up with it on the radio from what I understand, but it was always like an episode behind. So you was always one episode behind what the theater was at. Um, and also you didn't have the visuals. You didn't have the, the footage because you're listening to it on the radio. So, you know, not, not as fun of an experience. But anyways, I just want to get that out of the way that a lot of people have a hard time with that. And I think that that because Gundam was basically trying to do another Star Wars, I mean, it was literally ripping off Star Wars in certain ways, which, you know, was common. A lot of stuff in the late 70s and early 80s did that. There were so many Star Wars ripoffs, it's not even funny. Battlestar Galactica, uh, Star Crash, Gundam. You know, they all have some references to Star Wars. They all have some sort of kind of like Star Wars-ish feeling content. And they were trying to do a very similar experience with Gundam when it came to feeling like you're being dropped into the middle of this world. You're not seeing it from the beginning. Unfortunately, while that used to work a lot more, it doesn't really work anymore. And I feel like that's one of the things that really hurts the original Gundam series for beginners and newbies. And that would also hurt people going into a Gundam movie because you're going to be starting off in the middle of everything. And that will hurt people's per, uh, experience because they're going to be like, well, they didn't explain anything. It's because you're, it's like, you're not giving it a chance to develop. And if they're going to, if they planned on making it into a, a series of movies, then yeah, the universal century could work. But if they're not, then there's no point in, in trying to do a universal century Gundam live action movie if you don't plan on doing a series of movies. Uh, because there's just so much in the Universal Century that without it being a series of movies, it wouldn't really help. I mean, it's huge. Just look at my part two video for uh, Gundams for Beginners Guide. There's so many Universal Century. It's like an hour long video, but like, 30 or 20 ish minutes or so, I think it's about 30 minutes of the video is nothing but me telling you all of the Universal Century shows. That's insane. So, obviously, there's a lot of content there, and they're not going to be able to squeeze all of that into like a two hour movie. Even if they made it three hours, they're still not going to be able to squeeze all of that into a movie that long. So, you would definitely have to think of another way to do it and i know how move you know how movies work and they're not they're not going to make they're not going to plan for a series of movies unless they absolutely know there's no way they could fail but of course that's not a guarantee with something that you're turning into a live action movie from something that comes from another country you're not guaranteed that you know adaptations don't always work so We'd have to keep that in mind with uh, Gundam as well. So, just you know, for everyone who's a Universal Century fan, don't go all crazy and upset whenever I don't really talk about it as the one I think they should turn into a movie. Again, like I said, I love it, but I know it wouldn't 
work for your average moviegoer. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I want to talk about what I do believe would be the best one, and that is alternate universe shows. I know a lot of people are going to be upset by this, but hear me out. It works even in the animated context. A lot of people um, get into Gundam through the alternate universe shows. And while I don't think that's the best way to do it when it comes to the anime, when it comes to a live action movie, really, that is the best choice, in my opinion, for the movie. Because... It's okay if they put you in the middle of this world and don't explain everything right away because it's like it doesn't have a huge line in, 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 of connected t uh, material. You know, you jump into Gundam 00 and, and what, what do you have? You have uh, one show that's technically 50 episodes but they broke it into two seasons, so it's 25 each. But basically, it's just it's just 50 episodes. And then it has a movie. And that's all it's got. That's not a whole lot of content. And you can do a lot more with that and turning that into a two-hour or three-hour movie um, in live action. Because you don't have to think about, well, what about this other show? Or what about this? How do we keep this all in context and don't ruin anything? And a lot of the stuff that they were already talking about that, that they were going to do was already changing too much as it is. But if you were to take an alternate universe series, something that's already not a part of Universal Century, you're not going to have that huge backlash from the majority of Gundam fans. Because the majority of Gundam fans are definitely Universal Century fans. And unfortunately, they're the most hostile group in the entire community. I'll talk about that in a different video, but just keep that in mind. Anyways, the point is, is that they would be very upset, especially when they do things that really don't make sense with the Universal Century. And since they're already going to be making so many changes, they should just do an alternate universe show. Because that way, it's fine to make changes. Because most of the fan base either doesn't like those shows or just thinks that this is something that they added to enrich that universe more. You know, it makes sense. So for me personally, the ones I would honestly recommend to be a um, live action movie would primarily be... Gundam 00. Uh, the, mo the main reason why I would choose Gundam 00, even though its plot gets kind of heavy at times, is because they can kind of forego all of the child soldier stuff at the, in, in, that's in the show and focus primarily on the plot that the, move, that the animated movie has. And if they really wanted to, they could just do a live action version of the Gundam 00 movie. And because that has aliens in it, it'd be easier for people who are uh, just regular moviegoers to get into it because they're not having to think of, you know, the, the political circumstances of that universe because all of that stuff is in the show. And when it comes to the movie, there really isn't any politics. It's just aliens show up and everybody has to join forces to fight them. It's not very good in my opinion, but I think that'd be one of the best things to do for the live action movie for your average moviegoer. Because right now, I know many people are tired of politics. And Gundam's a politic-heavy show. That's the entire point of the series. It's all about politics, which is why it explains why you have people in, you know, giant robot suits shooting at each other. You know, you can't just be giant robot wars without any kind of context. And when you're talking about military, you have to involve political uh, discourse to understand why these factions exist and why are they fighting. But of course, a lot of people don't want to don't want to see that nowadays. And I don't know when that's going to change. 
when is this going to be something that is blown over and we're no longer as political like, you know, like we are now? I don't know. I can't answer that, obviously. But as of right now, I think that would be the best one to do. Now, of course, if you want to give them a more Gundam-like experience when it comes to politics as well, which is the one thing that really scares me because I'm wondering if they'll try and use the politics that's in Gundam to inject all kinds of bull crap that doesn't need to be in it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, you, you do that, you're going to ruin it. It's just flat out. If you change the politics, you're going to ruin it. Um, that would be the fastest way to ruin Gundam. It would be the fastest way. Um, which, of course, means that I think the next one, personally, when it comes to politics and when it comes to the show itself, would be Gundam Seed. I know a lot of people wouldn't like that because a lot of people don't like Gundam Seed. But if you think about it from a, a, a context of where we're at right now, Gundam Seed is the closest one to what they could do for all the uh, extreme leftist people. You know, like they could add in a lot of that um, other types of political stuff that's been going on right now, and it wouldn't affect the 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 uh, story too much because Gundam Seed already kind of has some of that ideology in its story. It's not it doesn't beat you over the head with it like they would do, but you hear but you hear what I'm saying though because it already has some of that blood in it. Adding more really wouldn't affect it too much. I personally wouldn't like it, but that's just because I like Gundam Seed as it is. But I can definitely see why that particular show would probably be the best one to do if they were going to inject their uh, type of politics that Hollywood likes to do. Um, you know, that's probably the best one for that. And of course, if you were to go more, uh, I guess you could say, safe with it and make it something that you could be like, oh, you can take your kids to this because the other two shows you definitely can't take your kids to. It's a little bit too heavy for kids to watch. Um, if you wanted to do that where it could be like a family a family movie, just turn uh, Gundam Build Fighters or Build Fighters Try into a movie, a live action movie. It'd be fun. Not only could they do awesome you know, characterization because they could do they could have all these different types of groups in the movie because the show has all kinds of different groups in it. Um, you could also have more Gundams and more mobile suits and mobile armors on screen in that world, and it wouldn't be so restrictive because the other worlds you can only choose suits from that universe if you start injecting other suits that don't belong there it's going to ruin the experience for Gundam fans so if you want to add as many as you can and also make it family friendly you could just do uh build fighters or build fighters try or maybe even build divers but that gets a little heavier near the end so I don't know about that but at least build fighters and build fighters try they could be the best ones for it honestly I know, you know, some people would really be upset that this is, would be the route that they would take for a live action movie. But really, one, it would be probably the most successful ways to make a Gundam movie without A, completely ruining the movie, and B, having at least a slight chance of being a most, uh, a moderately successful film with average moviegoers um and really that's the only ways i could think of it them doing a live action movie without not only ruining the movie but also turning off the audience because the thing is, is that when you announce something like this you're going to have two groups of people going to go see the movie people who are hardcore gundam fans such as myself and people who are not people who are just regular moviegoers 
their their uh, expectations are going to be very different. And unfortunately, they're not going to align. So if you do some of what I said here, I think that would be a much better experience if you were to put it in other Gundam universes and not in Universal Century. Because the Universal Century is too compact. There's just too much of it. So it would be better to go somewhere else where there isn't as much context that's needed. All you need to know for a lot of those shows is that there's giant robot suits and they're called Gundams. And the movie can explain the rest of the world if it wants as best it can and characterize the people and all that, hopefully. <laughs> and of course, if they ruin it by injecting a bunch of their own politics, or if they did that with Seed, it really wouldn't affect the movie too much because it already has a lot of those politics in it. So you can kind of see where I'm going with all this. I'm just trying to appease both groups. I want the audiences to be happy and of course the filmmakers to be happy because they'll make the money that they want and they'll be able to do what they want with the movie and not, you know, hurt it too much. I know that Sunrise said they wouldn't let them do anything without their permission, which is probably why we don't have the movie right now because every single detail has to be run through Sunrise first. And I feel like that's going to really slow down the process if it hasn't already caused the process to be canceled because of the different cultures and our different ideologies, especially when it comes to uh, AKA politics, like I said before. So uh, I think that that would definitely be a better experience for everyone involved. Just stay away from the Universal Century for a live action movie unless you're going to do a full series. That would be the only way to do it. So... That would be cool. Uh, and honestly, I think those would be the best ones. Like, I thought maybe Gundam Age could work, but I feel like one movie that has four different generations of pilots just wouldn't be uh, user-friendly, I guess you could say, or viewer-friendly. And uh, IBO could work uh, as a live-action movie, but... Only if you were to cut out some of the uh, more lovey-dovey stuff uh, with the characters. Because, you know, they're technically, a lot of them are under 18. So, yeah, you wouldn't want to keep that in your movie. Unless, well, then again, they did make cuties, so who knows. <laughs> um, regardless... That's my ideas. Uh, leave your uh, leave your personal ideas in the comments below. I'd like to hear what you uh, what you think. Uh, like the video and subscribe if you if you want. Hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Yokai out.